All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this Lee Seju animation using Cinema 4D and X Particles. The inspiration for this tutorial came from another user who asked me about creating something similar to another YouTube tutorial. The creator there was Simon Upsdale. He used Blackmagic Fusion to create this animation, and a user asked me, hey, can we create this using Cinema 4D? Absolutely. And believe it or not, we can do this fairly quickly by incorporating X particles. Now, if you do not have X particles, you can use the default particle system in Cinema 4D, but I will be using X particles in this tutorial. So let's jump right into it. Cinema 4D R20 is what I'm using, and let's go ahead and create that Lisa Zhu curve. So underneath the pen menu, we want to select formula. Now, this Lisa Zhu curve is created using parametric equations. Me being a college math instructor, this definitely sparked my interest when I got this request. I cover parametric equations in a lot of trigonometric courses that I teach, as well as calculus. But what you're going to see here is a graphic on the screen, and I'm going to type in the x of t and y of t first, and I'm going to explain a few things to you. So typing those two equations in, if you start changing some of these things, such as the amplitude or the period of these functions, it will change the curve. But with everything else at its default setting, all we see is this little curve right here. Now, a way that we can see more of this curve, let's increase the T max, and you're going to start to see this curve getting drawn, but the more we add here, you're going to see that it starts to get jagged. Let's increase the samples up to 200, and that will smooth the curve out. And if I increase this T max up to 60, it's almost closed. I'm going to raise my T min to zero, and what it did there is it took away a little bit of this curve, and this is where our emitter is going to start following this spline right here shortly. Now, if we increase this up to 63 for our T max, this is where the curve is going to start overlapping itself. And you may not be able to see that, but on this screen, you can barely see two different curves, but really they are overlapping each other. So with a T max set to 63, we have completed one full lap, but I'm going to set my T max up even higher to say 90. And what that's going to do is it's going to do more than one lap. It's going to do roughly a lap and a half. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want this emitter to do one full lap through this curve. And then I want it to stop emitting right here. But yet I want it to keep traveling along this Lee curve. Now we do have some more jaggedness in here. You can definitely see it right there. Let's increase the samples up to 400 and it's pretty darn smooth now. So the next thing we want to do is we want to change the plane. I'm going to set this plane of this formula to XZ. So you can see that we do have a flat curve looking at it from the side like that. But we actually want to give this some three dimension, some swoopiness or whatever you want to call it. And we can do that by changing our Z of T. So again, that graphics on the screen. So with 20 sine T, we definitely get some swoopiness to this curve. But if we look at it straight down, we still pretty much get that same Lee you curve. But if we look at it from the side, you can see that we do have some swoopiness. As a matter of fact, if we look at it from this side, we get this infinity symbol. And that's actually another parametric equation. It's called a lemniscate. But looking at it from here, it's totally random looking. So we have our curve set up. Let's go ahead and add a floor. And I'm actually going to use a plane here. This is what our particles will collide with. And I'm moving it down so that this entire curve is above the floor. And we can see there that it is. Let's go ahead and add a camera. And I'm going to get inside that camera. And I want to look straight down at this curve. A quick way to do that, let's zero out the X. Let's zero out the Z. For our H rotation, we don't need any. And for our pitch rotation, let's set it to negative 90. And now we're going to be looking down at this curve. Let's move it up a little bit higher to say 400. And we'll come back a little bit later and adjust the size of our floor as needed. And now I'm going to add a Cinema 4D tag, a protection tag that is, for this camera. That way we cannot move this around. But I'm going to jump out of that for a moment. And let's go ahead and work on our emitter. I mentioned X particles, so let's go ahead and bring in an XP system. For the XP system, underneath the object tab, I'm just going to hide this orange icon by clicking on icon and viewport right there. And then this orange rectangle that you see is our emitter. I actually want to emit from a circle. Notice it changed to a circle, and I want to use a small radius. Let's go with five. If we press play right now, it's going to be emitting in the Z plus direction, as you can see right there. If we change this to Y minus, 
it's going to be shooting down. So let's replay this. We're good to go. But now we have a little issue here. It is definitely passing through the floor. So let's go ahead and fix that by adding a collider tag to our floor, our plane. So this is going to be an X particles tag and we want to choose collider. So now I'm going to zoom in on these particles and let's go ahead and change these particles display. So we're going to go to the display tab of our XP emitter. Let's set this to circles and we'll keep it at a single color for right now. If we play this, you're going to see the particles are bouncing. Not only that, the particles have a default speed applied to them. Go to the emission tab and I want to cut this speed down to zero. And now if I play this, the particles are being emitted, but they're not going anywhere because they have no default speed. I actually want to let gravity control that. And we can do that by adding a modifier, motion modifier, and let's pick XP gravity. Now this green circle that you see here, that's actually our gravity piece. I don't need to see that, so I'm just gonna hide it. But now if we play this, you're gonna see the particles do fall and they're bouncing a little bit. I don't know if you can notice that, but I don't want them to bounce. So we can quickly fix that by going to the collider tag and let's set the bounce to zero. And let's actually cut the friction all the way up to 100%. So essentially what's gonna happen here, these particles are gonna fall and they're going to appear to stick to the floor because there's no bounce. Now they're not gonna slide anywhere either because of this friction. And yes, there is another spot in our XP emitter, the extended data, if we go to physical data, these particles have their own friction and their own bounce, but we don't have to change these. We're just fine with our collider tag with the bounce and friction set the way they are here. Let's go ahead and change a few more things about our emitter. Let's go to the emission tab and let's give them a smaller radius, say one centimeter with a variation of 0.9 centimeters. Basically what this means is the biggest radius we could have would be one plus this variation. So that's 1.9 centimeters. And the smallest radius we could have is one minus 0.9, which is 0.1 centimeters. And if I just emit a few frames here, you can see that each one of these particles have a different radius. And for now, I'm actually going to emit not quite as many. Let's just go with 100 so we can get a better view of what's going on here. Let me restart this. And now we can clearly see we have some different radii for each particle. Something else I want to do is I want to make these particles look different based on their speed. And for our emitter, if we go to display, we're still showing the circle, but I'm going to use a gradient parameter. For that parameter, I'm going to choose speed and I want to check the auto box. Now I want to invert this gradient. So I'm going to right click invert and basically our slowest particles or particles with no speed will be completely white and our fastest moving particles will be this dark blue. Now, if I play this back, you're going to see that right when the particles are emitted, they don't have any speed gravity takes over and then our darkest blue ones are here right before they hit the floor and then when they technically i guess you could say stick to the floor that's when they become white again but what i don't want to happen is these particles are falling too fast and i want to create a smooth trail as this emitter traces along this spline this lisa jus curve well, what we can do is we can go to our xp gravity let's lower this gravity strength from 9.8 meters per second squared or 981 to 100. Let me replay this and you're gonna see that the particles fall a lot slower and they slowly build up their speed. This is what we want. And you can try smaller values or slightly bigger. Now let's go ahead and attach this emitter to this formula, to this spline. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our XP emitter, we're gonna add a Cinema 4D tag and align to spline. Nothing changed because we have to actually put a spline into this tag. So I'm going to drag that formula and then the circle shifted over here. So now if we play this, you're going to see those getting emitted right there at the beginning. Remember back at the beginning of this tutorial, I mentioned this is where it's going to start. So at the beginning of our animation, frame zero, position zero percent, I'm going to keyframe that. I'm going to add more frames. Let's go with 480 total frames. And at the very end of our animation, I want the position to be at 100%. And I'm gonna keyframe that. So here's what's gonna happen. It's gonna start frame by frame. And notice as I go frame by frame, I'm just gonna play it through a little bit. Notice his position is changing as we progress through here. 
And if we play all the way through frame 480, essentially what's going to happen is, is it's going to go to 100%. But I'm going to pause this. If I drag it, it's not cached, so it's going to look a little funky. But right there, technically it's going to be at 100%, which is roughly a lap and a half. Our T-Min was zero. We completed one full lap around 63 for our T-Max. But I did make our T-Max, let's look back at it. I made it 90. So it's going roughly a lap and a half. Now this keyframed animation where we have this align to spline, right now it's an ease in, ease out interpolation, and I actually want this to be linear. So I'm gonna right click on this position, I'm gonna to go to animation, and let's look at our F curve. So notice we had this ease animation. I have both of my points selected, and if I simply click this right here, we got a straight interpolation. And in my opinion, this looks better with the swoopiness of our Lisa Zhu curve. So let's play this through again. And notice what we have here. We have these white particles that have hit the floor and we have this nice trail. And the reason why this trail is nice looking is because we lowered our gravity. If we raised our gravity up, they would be falling much faster and we wouldn't have this nice trail. Now you could even come in here into the gravity strength and give it some variation where the particles will be falling at different speeds. I didn't have this on that intro video, but if we look at this, that's actually not that bad looking. They're all falling kind of at random speeds. So I'll leave that up to you. I'm going to leave the variation at zero so that they all fall at the same speed. I think it's okay for us to start adding more particles in now. So back at our emission. Do we need a thousand? I don't know. Let's start with 500. Let's play this through. Notice we have that sweepiness to our trails and notice it kind of does jump along the straightaway, so to speak, if, if you can see that. That still looks pretty good though. Now I'm gonna to go to my camera view and I wanna make sure I time this out to where we're at a frame roughly somewhere around maybe 336 is where it's completed one full lap. So I tell you what, for my rate for the emitter, Uncheck emit all frames and let's tell it to stop emitting at 336, frame 336. Let's play this through. And right there, it stopped emitting, but the sphere, or not the sphere yet, but the emitter is still moving because it's following that align to spline. So speaking of sphere, let's go ahead and add one. I want this sphere to be bigger than the radius of our emitter circle. Our emitter circle was five centimeters. I'm gonna make this 10. And since we already had this aligned to spline, keyframed and everything, I'm gonna hold command, drag it on up, and now the sphere and the emitter are both going to move along this curve. Perfect. I think we are ready for some materials. Let's go ahead and get our shader for the X particles. And we're going to be using the standard renderer here. And you'll be surprised, it actually looks pretty good. Standard renderer and each one of these frames, even at 1920 by 1080, they render in about four or five seconds. And this is on my MacBook Pro, uh, the 2018 model. Let's drag that material onto our emitter. Let's go give it a test render. And we see our particles. Now these particles by default are taking the particle color, which is that gradient. But notice our render's a little flat. And if we go to the illumination for that material, there's our flat mode for lighting. Diffuse looks pretty good, but I'm actually going to go with fuzzy. Notice we do get a three-dimensional look to our particles, but I'm gonna go with fuzzy. That way we don't get that blackish shadow, and this doesn't look too bad. Now let's get a material for our floor. Depending on what material you will pick, it may bring in some noise or some elements or fireflies or whatever. I'm just gonna go with one of the material presets. I'm gonna to go to prime, materials, metal, and I'm gonna go with this silver tarnished. I'm gonna drag that onto our plane. And if I render this, it looks bright. This is the default lighting within the viewport. Let's actually render out our current frame. I'm not gonna save this. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 1920 by 1080. And let's see what this looks like. So it renders out fairly quickly, but we still have this brightness over here. Well, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an infinite light and I'm not gonna do anything else. Test render, now we don't have that brightness anymore. 
I'm going to add a material to that sphere. It's going to be a glass ball. I'm going to use visualize materials glass and I'm going to go with this frosted texture. Drag that onto our sphere. I'm going to play through a little bit more. I'm going to take my plane, make it a little bit bigger so that we are off the edges of our screen. I'm thinking maybe 500 by 500 depending on where you have your camera at. I'm going to jump out of that camera view. Zoom on in and let's just get a test render something like this. So you can see we have some pretty decent reflections with these illuminated particles, the fuzzy particles. You can see it in the floor here. We can see some refraction in our glass. And this doesn't look too bad. But something else I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my render settings for X particles. I'm going to set that blend to add. So as particles are overlapping each other, they will be brighter. Let's test that out. And they appear to be just a little bit brighter. Now, with these materials I've used here, I don't get a whole bunch of noise, and I'm okay with a little bit, considering each frame only takes about five or six seconds to render. But some things to point out, if you are using the standard renderer, anti-aliasing, since this will be an animation, let's set that to animation for our filter. And some things that you can adjust, your anti-aliasing, if you set this to best and start messing around with these values, lower that threshold down, it does help get rid of the noise or the graininess, but man, does it tack on some time to your renders. I'm talking over a minute per frame. So I'm okay with leaving it at default. And this MIP scale, any of these things, remember you can right click and show help. But again, I'm leaving everything default with the exception of the filter set to animation. And at this point, you could delete your protection tag on your camera if you wanted to, and you can animate your camera to you know, slowly move and show this final Lisa Zhu curve directly looking down on it. Or heck, just dragging around and getting a different view here. It doesn't look too bad. I mean, this may be my thumbnail or something like that. But uh, yeah, there you have it. Creating a Lisa Zhu curve in Cinema 4D using X particles. If you like what you see and you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.